Hi, everybody. This recorded class lectures for Wednesday, the 14th of February, Hydrologic Engineering is class 16. Um, as a reminder, this lecture and also the lecture for Friday, the 16th, are both, both going to be online classes that are posted on YouTube. So we won't have any in-person class meeting, but we will be back in class on Monday, February 19th, which is the day homework number five is due. So uh, that assignment is focusing primarily on hydrographs, and there are a couple of supportive examples that are included in this lecture. Uh, another unit hydrograph uh, example, continuing what we talked about in Monday's class, and then also a, an approach that's called the S-hydrograph method, which is used to uh, adjust the duration of a hydrograph. Let's say that we have a unit hydrograph, and if you note the axis units here, and maybe that's a bit small for you to see, but uh, on the horizontal axis it says time in hours. And what generated this unit hydrograph was a, uh, a certain amount of rainfall excess in a specified time period. And so um, in this example, we're going to say that it was one inch of rainfall excess in a one hour period. But you could also make a unit hydrograph that shows what would be the watershed response for an inch of rainfall that falls in a four hour period. And so there are different storm durations. And just to, I don't know, uh, skip ahead a little bit, the purpose of the S hydrograph method that I'll show, with, uh, show in the second half of today's class is to adjust the duration of the storm. So it doesn't always have to be a one hour storm duration that generates a unit hydrograph. But for this first example, we're going to assume that an inch of rainfall excess causes this response. Now this response is only going to be valid for the watershed in question. So our particular watershed may have a certain area, a certain uh, basin slope, sinuosity, it may have certain vegetative and soil characteristics, and so it's completely unique. And you couldn't take this unit hydrograph and transfer it exactly to another spot, although you could make adjustments and maybe try and adapt it to a different location. But a unit hydrograph that's generated from pure observation um, only applies to its watershed. And then think again also, what were the antecedent moisture conditions? when this unit hydrograph was generated. In other words, how long was it before, uh, since the last rainstorm until the storm that we're seeing? So even if we're working in our watershed and we have a fully calibrated unit hydrograph for that watershed, it may be that the unit hydrograph that we have um, occurred three days after a prior storm when the moisture was just kind of in the middle. But if we have a storm back to back on successive days, then the unit hydrograph response would be different. And we have to somehow reason out the differences and what they may be. You know, if the soil was already saturated, it could be that we see higher than expected runoff, and it could have a peak that occurs earlier than expected if the soil pores were already relatively full. And then if conditions were more dry than when our runoff hydrograph uh, was generated, then it could be that the response is lower and the peak arrives later. So just keep those things in mind, those limitations that this is just a simplification of reality. And whenever you're trying to make a prediction, um, there's just so much inherent variability, especially when it comes to hydrology, when there's just literally dozens and dozens of physical factors that are being incorporated into our model. Okay, so we take this unit hydrograph that we already have, we combine it with some rainfall excess. What's the difference between rainfall and rainfall excess? Rainfall excess would be stuff that's not into the ground or not passing by land. Okay, so it's not the infiltration, it's not interception. So there's a variety of abstractions that uh, if we have rainfall minus abstractions, then that's rainfall excess. So it's the leftover amount. You're exactly right. So what we're going to go through in this example is the process of taking this unit hydrograph, which occurred from a one hour pulse of rainfall, and we're going to say, well, what if we have six pulses of rain? Uh, the first two pulses 
They're hour long each, and you can see it's going to be 0.9 inches per hour of rainfall excess. So back-to-back -back successive pulses of that. And then in the third hour, more rainfall. And so you can see what the rainfall patterns are. And do you remember what was kind of the key item when I was doing that demonstration in Excel on Friday of what you do when you're adding together unit hydrographs? Stagger it. So you delay it. Each new column is an hour later. So that's kind of the secret sauce of applying this unit hydrograph is we want to have an overall runoff hydrograph. And with each successive hour, we're going to delay by one hour by, by dropping it down. And then we add all of the columns to the left up to generate an overall summation of the runoff hydrograph. All right, so I'm going to hand out this. I've got it on paper, the data. And um, I asked you if you could to bring your laptop, and I apologize for not thinking to suggest that earlier. Um, and I was tempted to give you a template file, but I think this would maybe be more useful as a learning activity if I don't give you a template file. And if you just take that key idea that I've described, where you're staggering each successive hour by a row, and, uh, and one of the most useful skills an engineer can have is seeing a problem and then thinking about how am I going to attack this in Excel, you know, being able to conceptualize it in Excel. So let me give you the handout. Okay, so let's see what we've got. An inch of rainfall excess gave us this runoff hydrograph. So this is, must be a pretty large basin because look, it takes a full 24 hours to drain after an hour of rainfall. So um, pretty big watershed. And then the, the data that we have for our storm that we want to model is that for the first two hours, we know the rainfall and the abstractions. And the units of this are inches per hour. So it's a one hour period where we're having 3.2 inches per hour of rainfall, 2.3 inches per hour of abstractions. And so what you need to calculate is the rainfall excess. So it's simply going to be subtracting those two to find out how many inches of rainfall excess do you have during each one hour pulse. So just to reiterate, the units of this runoff, uh, the unit hydrograph, is CFS per inch of rainfall excess. All right, so I'm going to pause, give you a few minutes to think about this, start putting your data in. I've got my solution, and I'll circulate around just to offer suggestions as needed. Then, of course, we'll look at the solution together.
All right. So uh, what we will expect is that this watershed is going to experience a peak outflow of about 210 CFS for the storm event that we see. Um, now, at the beginning of this example, I told you to keep in mind the, uh, the issue of prior conditions. And so if you were going to predict, how might you expect the second hour would be different from the first hour? Like, the runoff hydrograph says that one inch of rainfall excess would cause this response. But just think directionally. If you had this for, you know, you had the uh, inch of rainfall excess in one hour, and then you had another hour after that with the same inch of rainfall excess, how would you expect the second hour of runoff to be different from the first? It would be greater because the, uh, the rates of infiltration and all of that are going to be reduced. So maybe we're already accounting for that when we quantify the rainfall excess. You know, because remember that um, excess says by definition that infiltration has been accounted for. So probably what we would, rather than changing the hydrograph, what we'd want to do is say, well, is it really going to be the same 0.9 inches of rainfall excess for the second hour? You know, if we have two hours of the same amount of rainfall, wouldn't the abstractions be less in the second hour? So we might be able to fine tune what this the overall runoff hydrograph looks like um, by focusing in on that. But as far as how to apply the method according, you know, like, the textbook approach to applying the runoff hydrograph, the unit hydrograph, the key idea is that we're staggering in each successive hour by one additional row. So you can see that the leading zeros at the head of that column keep increasing by one with each successive pulse, and then we add them all together in this column on the right side. Does anybody have questions on how to apply the method? No? All right. My suggestion is save this file so that you have it as a reference. I'll save it too in case the power goes out, which it's done a couple times this semester. All right. And then create another tab because we're going to have an additional example in just a moment. Okay, now, the example that we just worked, we had a hydrograph that was for a one-hour rainfall duration. But what if we're interested to find out what is the watershed response for a different duration? We want to use the same unit hydrograph. So the S hydrograph method is a technique for changing a unit hydrograph and figuring out how its shape and timing is going to be adjusted if you have a different storm duration. So let's say, for instance, that we have a unit hydrograph that corresponds to a duration of rainfall excess of two hours. Now we're going to call that storm duration T sub R. That's kind of the, the variable that our textbook assigns for the S hydrograph approach. Um, if we want to find out what would be the equivalent hydrograph for a four-hour storm. So it's the same unit of rainfall, just spread out over a longer duration. Then what we'd expect, of course, is that the peak rate is going to be lower, and it's going to arrive slower. But how much? So that's what the S hydrograph method does. And the technique that it used, the reason why it's called an S hydrograph, is that you repeat the normal unit hydrograph several times together and you add up all of those unit hydrographs and the S curve is the resultant of adding all of the delayed given unit hydrographs. And then you go through a process of delaying the S curve and dividing by the ratio of the two durations to find out the new unit hydrograph for the longer storm. So that's what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to illustrate, and I would recommend that you follow along, 
just so that you've got a reference of your own that you can go back to when you're working on the homework. We're going to start off with this given unit hydrograph that was an inch of rainfall excess that fell over a two hour period. So from time zero to time two, we had one inch of rainfall excess. And then this is the hydrograph that it generated. So T sub R is two. And what we want to know is what is going to be the equivalent hydrograph for the same inch of rainfall excess, but with a longer storm duration. So T prime R is four. So just to summarize the procedure I'm going to go through, first of all, we'll create the S-curve by repeating this given hydrograph over and over again with no adjustments, just copying it and repeating it. And then we're going to lag the S-curve by T prime R, which you can see here is four hours. So lagging it means we just create a copy and we paste it four hours down. Then subtract the, subtract the lagged curve from the original S-curve and then divide to find the height of the peak by the ratio of the desired to the given storm duration. All right, so we're just going to start with this blank worksheet. And uh, we're going to have to key everything in here manually. That's fine. It's not too bad. So time in hours is what we're starting with. And then the two-hour unit hydrograph, which has units of CFS per inch of rainfall excess. So just, first of all, digitizing the given data. So we had 0, 2, 4, and it goes through a period of 24 hours. All right, and then the, uh, the given runoff was 0 CFS, 69 CFS, 143, 328, 389, 352, 266, 192, 123, 84, 49, 20, and 0. Okay, so that's the given. So the first step that we're going to apply here is create the S-curve. And the way that we create the S-curve is that we just repeat the given unit hydrograph over and over again. So I'm going to take the given unit hydrograph and repeat it with the same technique that we did with the other unit method where I am pasting it a row down and then paste it a row down again. And again, so I'm just doing control V to paste over and over again. Paste it, paste it, paste it. In this case, I think, uh, like, how many times are you going to paste it? You don't necessarily know um, until you have created the S-curve because we want it to achieve this stability for long enough that we can subtract out the S-curve again. So just to make sure we have enough, I'm going to do uh, 12 columns. One, two, three, four. 12 columns. Of course, if it's getting too big, you can change the width of these columns just to make sure that we're fitting it all on the same page. If you highlight the columns and then change the width, there we go. So let me continue pasting a few more times. All right. So the first part of the lag is just to repeat the unit hydrograph with a delay of two hours each time. And then we want to sum it all together. So it is the sum of all the columns to the left. And you don't have to put zero in the cells that have nothing in it. It'll still read that as zero. All right. So. We've done it enough times that it achieves kind of this upper asymptote, 2015 CFS. And that's kind of this part of the S-curve. And if I, if I repeated it more and more times, then this would continue. But I don't necessarily need to have an infinite number of columns. I think this will be enough. OK, so this is the S-curve. Let me just create another row there so that we can title this is the S curve. And then we want to have a lagged S curve. 
And the instructions tell us to lag it by d prime r. So lag it by the desired duration of four hours. So I'm going to copy the same curve. So I'm just going to highlight it here. Got it highlighted. Copy, control C. Now, where to paste? If I follow the same thing of just pasting it in the next row, then it's only been lagged by two hours. So that's not enough. I need to lag it by four hours. So I'm pasting it down here. Hmm. I need to paste values. Because it was a formula. This is a uh, tricky thing. Look at what I have in here as a formula. Sum of B3 through N3 and so on. So these are formulas. So when I highlight it, if I do Control C and then if I paste, just the default paste is to paste the formulas. But I don't want to paste the formulas. I want to paste the values. So I'm going to go Paste values so that it pastes the numbers themselves and not the equation. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, we're seeing the zero four hours after it occurred in the F in the S curve. So the original S curve had that zero at time zero. We see it at time four. And then 69 CFS was at hour two. Here our 69 CFS is at hour six. So we have successfully implemented this lag by t prime r. Okay, so step three is to subtract the last the lagged S curve from the original. So here's the original S curve. Here's the lagged. So our next one is the lagged four hour hydrograph. So subtract equals this minus that. The original minus the lag. Now, we've got some spots where it goes negative, and all of those can just be overridden as zero. So we don't have negative flow rates after a certain time. It's just the watershed is drained and it goes to zero. Okay, so here's our lag four hour S curve. And the only other thing that we have to do is we have to divide the lagged four hour S curve by the ratio of the times. Because remember, this is an inch of rainfall excess that spread out over four hours instead of out of two. So we're going to see uh, lower peak flow rates. And right now, this would suggest that the peak flow rates are higher. Look at the original. This is an inch of rainfall excess. And the peak that we saw was 389 CFS per inch of rainfall excess. And that was here at time 8. Well, so far, this is saying, well, it would be higher flow rates. And so this last step that we're applying, divide the result by T prime R divided by TR. So T prime R for us is four hours. TR is two hours. So we're going to divide by two. So I'm going to call this final column here the uh, four hour unit hydrograph. Okay, so it is each of these amounts divided by 2. And it's the times still apply, but the uh, let me highlight this so that we can see the final hydrograph. So the four hour unit hydrograph, instead of being 389 as the peak, the peak is 370. And you can notice that it also is an hour later. Well, not an hour. Um, it's at hour 10 rather than at hour 8. So it's been delayed into the, uh, the next time increment because the rainfall itself was spread out over a longer duration. So we still, it's not like you won't see any flow 
during the first four hour block. There is still a little bit of runoff observed at hour two, but it's just the, uh, because the rainfall is spread out over a longer duration, the, the peaks are lower and uh, delayed a bit. So that's the S hydrograph method. And combined, those tools are surprisingly um, valuable. These techniques are going to be kind of working in the background when we get into these really sophisticated watershed models. Um, they're, they're built on the fundamental principles of a unit hydrograph, lagging the unit hydrograph based on what kind of rainfall is observed, breaking up the rainfall experience into tiny little time pieces and kind of numerically integrating what happens through the watershed.